Journey to the Multiverse Within A 1500 microgram LSD trip report sent in by a subscriber So I decided to finally submit my report This is quite a detailed one and I've tried to include as much as I could remember One final thing though before I start I apologise in advance for any grammatical mistakes and such and I certainly don't mean to impose my views and or rationality on anyone in any form I'm simply just presenting my own experience and my own thoughts regarding the matter. So, let's begin. The setup. I've always been curious about acid. I wonder what it would be like to hallucinate. Would I see the things with my own eyes, or would it be more like a visual imagination? Finally, it was the time to know. It was around 9pm. I was with my best friend, let's call him Kay and one of his friends as well, who we'll call O. We were at a beach, Kalangut Beach, Goa, India. I got the paper, which the dealer promised me is 1500 micrograms in total, and asked me only to eat one half, otherwise I'd been mad messed up, to quote his words. But of course, I ate the whole thing. I took the paper and sucked on it. As time passed, we became curious about what would happen and when. Kay thought the dealer tricked us, and that was just a plain paper with some colours on it. About an hour of sitting there, I felt weird, and told Kay that something was kicking in. He seemed sceptical, and thought I was only saying that to justify to myself that I wasn't cheated. The onset. I felt sand on the beach racing about, trying to come up from the surface. I looked up, and saw stars that started moving. Kay and O were still thinking I'm trying to show off just to cover up because the guy had scammed us. I got up and roamed about on the beach, and then hands started coming out from the sand. They were grabbing me, trying to pull me down into it. I was skipping the sand and jumping here and there to avoid being grabbed. I looked up, and the stars all turned green, and were shooting these green beams of light down to the beach. I lay down and saw them moving fast creating a 3D wireframe of green lights while shooting green beams down below. As I looked again towards the horizon, in the dark shade of sea, I saw mountain tops peaking at the end. Then, I saw a Colossus Buddha lying sideways, where there were mountains just a moment before. I asked Kay to take me back to our hotel, because I realised it was going to get out of hand real soon. Putting my hands over his shoulder, we left for the hotel, me still trying to avoid being caught by those hands which are coming out from the sand. Prelude Just as we got out of the sand onto the road, a slow soft music started to play, and everything fell in slow motion. Pedestrians were disappearing, and colourful lights began to cover my view. Our hotel was in a dark alley near to the beach, about a five minutes walk. When we got there, I had totally lost all my motor skills, and was completely relying on Kay to take me to the room safely. Just before we were about to enter the hotel, I had to close my eyes because the lights and colours I saw were so intense that I felt I'd go blind if I kept looking at them. It felt like staring into the sun, but with millions of colours instead of just yellow, and it covered my whole peripheral vision. When we finally entered the room, that's when the trip really started to step up. The journey. Inception. In the room, I could open my eyes. The intensity of light decreased tremendously. There were faces coming out from the walls. All kinds of faces. Mostly animals of sharp teeth. Wolves, dogs, demons, dragons and whatnot. The floor tiles started to break and move apart. I lay on the bed and the music got so intense and this cloud formed over my head and started dripping blood. K and O was sitting in the terrace while I laid there on the bed. I felt highly dehydrated and was drinking whenever I felt conscious, which was about every 20 to 30 minutes. About two to three hours in, I remember no concept of time, I'm just telling the time of events as per what K and O told me later. I felt quite hungry, because we haven't had dinner at all. I went to the terrace and grabbed a piece of a roll that Kay was eating. But just as I looked outside, I saw a T-Rex coming from behind the tree. 
and I dropped the roll and went inside to save my life, as I was sure he was coming to eat me. Story 1 After that T-Rex came to eat me, I ran inside and lay on the bed again. Then, I saw there were people around me. Doctors in their white coats, performing some sort of procedure or something. They cut my stomach open, and the only light I could see was the one they shine on the patient's organs. They were discussing something. Then, it all went blank. After a while, I remember it was a dark night, and there were no lights whatsoever. I was in a graveyard, and I was carrying a large cross sign. Story 2 After that graveyard scene, everything went blank. I gained my consciousness again, and had some water. Kay was worried sick, and he was searching on the net what to do to calm an acid peak and whatnot. He asked me if I was alright, but I couldn't put together any words. The music hadn't faded, but the intensity of it had slowed down. I lay down again on the bed, and shot once again into another world. I don't know how to really describe it, but if any of you have played Batman Arkham Asylum, then there's a scene with Scarecrow where he's in space, with fragments of ruins from houses scattered around in the form of a circle, of which Scarecrow is in the middle. Batman must hide from his vision, while reaching for the last point to kill the Scarecrow. Well, I was there. I was the Bat-fucking-man. I saw the Scarecrow and I had to save my life. I don't know how I saved my life though. After a long time of escaping his vision and jumping around, I again went blank. Story 3 I once again gained consciousness for a while. Oh, was asleep. Kay was just lying there. My motor skills were better. I went to pee and washed my face. But the shape morphing and everything else was still there. I called my girlfriend, which took over ten minutes to dial, and told her that all this shit was happening to me. She got crazy worried, but Kay talked to her and ensured that he was taking care of me. I sloughed on the bed again and as I lay down and closed my eyes, the peak took over me, and I got lost in another vision. This time, there was a huge staircase in the middle of nowhere. Just a spiral staircase, and some people on it at different levels. The camera zoomed in, and it focused on an old guy. And guess what? That old guy was none other than me. Just as the focus was on his, or my face, there was also a waiter carrying coffee, and he bumped into me and spilt the coffee all over me. The camera again zoomed out to put the whole staircase in the view, and then zoomed in again, this time focusing on the waiter. And, sort of unexpectedly, that waiter is also me. Now, as I was descending the stairs, a kid bumped into me that made me spill the coffee on that old man, who, again, was me. It zoomed out once again to get the whole staircase in view, and started zooming in again. But this time, the focus was on the kid, and to no surprise, that kid was me. I was playing with a bouncy ball, I was trying to catch it when I was running, and I bumped into the waiter that made him spill his coffee on the old me. Finally, again the view was all zoomed out to cover the whole staircase, and this time while it zoomed in, it focused on an infant in his mother's arms who was feeding on her breast. And, to no one's surprise, that infant was also only me. Interlude After this part, I gained some sense of consciousness. I had water, went to pee again, and peed a lot. As I was coming back from the restroom, I noticed that our hotel room was flying in space, shattered into pieces, with nothing but void all around it. I sat on the terrace and smoked a cigarette by myself. K and O were both asleep. I went to bed again and decided to lie down. Ego death and meeting the source. It's been more than a year, but my hands still shiver as I think about that moment and try to put that down in words. I'll try my best to recreate it, but no matter how hard I try, 
I'm sure I cannot exactly put how I feel into words. This time when I lay down, my eyes close. I saw stickman figures, more like that gingerbread man figure in Shrek. It was all black except for them, and there were a lot of them, in green colour. They were joining hands to form a circle while their legs spread outwards. It was a bit like when a father swings his child by his hands and his legs spread outward with the force. Their legs were in that position, and they're all coming from outward to join hands and become one. First, there was only one circle like this, and there were more, lots of them, everywhere. The music that was playing is inexplicable. It felt like my brain was about to orgasm. Then the circle came down, zooming in at infinite speed, and took my hands to join them too. But just as soon as I held the hands, the circle moved back up again, taking me up with them, moving in a spiral inward motion, concentrating to a single point. But then, I lost my hands. It felt thwarting. But then, they came back down again, taking me again by my hands, and like them, I was a gingerbread man too. They came down and took me again, and we all, in this circle, and all of us in their respective circles, started to move spirally inward, trying to collapse into a single point. But again, I had lost my hands. It was as if you were in a video game, and you are in a final boss fight, you just keep losing and losing and losing. But you know you are about to win. This is about to end. Well, I felt just like that. And I knew I was at the verge of something big. I could feel it. The anticipation was running extreme. And then, the cycle repeated. They all came down again. I joined hands. And we started moving inward in spiral direction. But this time, I didn't let go. And fuck, I died. Just when I merged with them, and we concentrated into a single infinitesimal point of oneness, my brain filled with what I can easily say is a thousand orgasms. And then, it all went blank. Nothingness. Void, death, life, abyss. Everything and nothing altogether. The whole concept of humanity, life, death, love and hate, faded into pure nothingness. And that one infinitesimally small point was the source. It was what empowered the whole creation and existence of not only the humanity, but the whole universe. After that, I don't remember a thing. I don't know how long I was out. I don't know how I came back. As per though, K and O, as I passed out, worried them sick. They wondered if I was dead or not. My heart was beating, but I was totally unconscious. I regained my conscious, according to them, after about half an hour or so. This was around six in the morning. The final chapter. After coming back from the ego death, I wasn't talking to anybody. I was just observing things around me. Each and everything seems so beautiful that I cannot find words to define it. About 7am in the morning, I was standing on the terrace, and the sun was just rising. To this day, I have not witnessed a more beautiful sunrise in my entire life. I could feel the air blowing through my hairs. I could see the grass. I appreciated the tiny little insects that were there in the room. When I saw the sun, I felt life, the meaning, love and the sense of oneness. I could feel every single ray of sun hitting me and hitting millions of things and people on this earth, giving birth to life as we know it. Just as I was witnessing this miracle of life, I decided to smoke another joint. But when I was done with that, the hallucination started up again, and I had this urge to lie down on the bed once more. My eyes closed, 
and this time I saw waves, a bit like those in mathematics, sine and cosine waves, and those waves were inside a huge auditorium and were slowly ascending. I saw people sitting there by the sides of the walls, smoking, talking, laughing, and I remember thinking to myself, holy shit, people live there? What is this place? Who are these people? And then the waves continued, leading me to the room, and then the doors of the room opened. And again, my mind went completely blank. I don't remember what or whom I saw in that room. I just remember waking up after about an hour. After my death, born again, with a new spirit like that of a newborn baby. Conclusion and Aftermath Even though I have tried to put in every single detail of my trip, or at least as much as I can remember, I know I can never put in words the feeling that I had in the trip. There's a saying that curiosity killed the cat, but I don't know how many know the full version of it, which is curiosity killed the cat, but satisfaction brought it back. This is exactly what happened to me. I was just doing it for fun, and just to see what it feels like to see visions, but it ended up changing my life more than anything ever did, or anything could ever do. I was already an atheist, but now I realise that the universe, the atoms, are all nothing but one. And our purpose is only restrained by our own self-absorbed human dogma, while the universe, life, and the existence itself is a much bigger reality. Thank you so much to the wonderful person who sent that in. This has been... One of the greatest trip reports I've read this year, I believe. It's um, quite different to a lot of the megadose LSD trip reports we read. Um, oftentimes, the 1000 plus range often ends in some form of PTSD. Obviously, they have these massive revelations about life, the universe, source, infinity. Um, but oftentimes, it really leaves them scarred. I'm just very happy for this person that even on their first LSD trip, they managed to see the inherent beauty within the experience of infinite consciousness. Obviously, this goes without saying, I don't think anybody should be doing this at all. I don't encourage or advocate any of this behavior. I'm just here to share these insights and revelations that people experience in these mystical states and would not would not like to see anybody else doing this because of a video I made and that's one of the things I do sort of worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. It doesn't really eat away at me, but because I know the majority of my audience are very wise, very intelligent and very mature about the way they consume psychedelics and I'm very proud of you for doing so. But I'm very happy for this guy, even though I think, yeah, obviously, it was like peak recklessness. I'm over the moon that he managed to come out the other side with well, basically an understanding of what's going on behind the curtain, what's actually, what the truth of reality sort of is. I'm not saying I know the truth, I'm not saying I know everything at all because I don't, um, and to admit you don't know is a powerful thing because I don't know. I'm just a finite human mind trying to comprehend the infinitude of infinite mind. But I do believe these sort of experiences could clue you in to a greater understanding, a greater consciousness, a more clear awareness of what is actually going on with the universe, with life, with consciousness, what it's all about. And yeah, like this guy says, it just, it just seems to be as if it is just an infinite mind interconnecting with itself. Everything is oneness. Every atom is slowly but surely moving together, slowly becoming one. A bit like how, say, um, a star collapses in on itself after a period of time. Let's say, not even the universe, but the whole multiverse in general, not even the multiverse, the multiverse of multiverses, the infinite universe that is everything. It seems like eventually, slowly but surely, it's all just coming back together to one infinitesimally small point to then experience itself in its whole um, infinitude. And then, perhaps, this is just me speculating, you as infinity, we as infinity, 
explore ourselves and experience ourselves forever in this cosmic orgasm that we bathe in for literally eternity until we decide to play some new games and experience a finite life exactly what you're experiencing as a human right now. So yep, thought I'd leave the commentary just short and sweet this time. This uh, trip said everything that I wanted it, wanted it to really. Um, what else is there to say? Oh, one thing I think the pers I'd like the person to clear up is what was going on with the, the dealer that he got the uh, acid off? It says that he got the paper which the dealer promised him is one 1500 UG. So is he saying the whole all the tabs that say there's 10 tabs, they all total up to 1500 UG? Or was it just one tab with 1500 UG? Um, that often, it's, I don't know if that's even possible to get 1500 micrograms on one tab. It must be, it must mean basically that the dealer said just eat only half of a tab because these are super strong. Um, and obviously he ended up eating the whole sheet of paper. It's pretty fucking crazy, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Fair enough. I'm really glad that ended up working out for him and it didn't end up in a psych ward like a lot of these uh, megadose individuals like like to end up doing so but yep yeah, rambled on for too long now i'll see you guys on the other side very glad to be back in the swing of things we're back in the saddle my friend see you later guys <laughs>